welcome back to the realm one popular opinions today i will be doing the seven ajas like book tag that i saw and immediately wanted to do it's by megan's reading revelations she created it and as a wheel of time fan i kind of felt not obligated to do it but very very interested in doing it as you can see i made like a poor attempt <laughs> to represent my Aja even though I have literally no clothes that are brown so I borrowed my mom's jacket <laughs> and we're gonna pretend that this is like brown representation considering that I have nothing else I am brown I mean it's kind of obvious I never really had to think about it and let me know what Aja you are in if you know I wish there was like a Pottermore type quiz that would be very cool but without further ado let's get into the video these were a bit more hard because I didn't have anything for that category but we're gonna do our best the first one is Red Aja name a book with a protagonist that likes to keep the law and since I had no other ideas I have <laughs> either Jim Hawkins and the doctor because they are very law abiding even though they do end up like <laughs> letting silver go or Mr. Nah, Dr. Jekyll. He is very, I think he's, I mean, he is a doctor, but there's also the lawyer character. So they're like the law abiding side of the story. And then we have Mr. Hyde, who is definitely not. So either of those two, but technically <laughs> neither of them, because there's things that happen. I generally don't read books about law abiding characters, apparently. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go with either Dr. Jekyll and his like lawyer friend or Jim Hawkins and the doctor from Treasure Island so <laughs> I did my best with this one the next green Aja name a book that has an epic battle or fight scene and in I had to mention one wheel of time book I mean otherwise the tag would have kind of been pointless but I picked a very underrated one I think <laughs> and that's the fight at the end of New Spring now, it's been a while since I read New Spring, I think like two years. It, I read it at the beginning of my booktube. But I remember really actually loving that last fight because it was very unique and sort of unexpected in a way. And I remember it being very exciting, even though I didn't expect it to. I mean, all of the Wheel of Time, obviously, <laughs> could be considered an epic battle or fight scene. But I would like to highlight the book, <laughs> the ending of the book, New Spring because I think it's a very underrated work in general. A lot of people don't really bother reading it and I think it's really, really good. So the ending really stood out to me and I had to mention at least one Wheel of Time book. I had two for this, but I wanted to pick one that I don't talk about that much. So we have Grey Aja, a book that you recommended to someone that they loved or a book someone recommended to you that you ended up loving. I always loved the movie for this, but I was really recommended the book because they said that it would be worth it. And they were right. <laughs> the Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. I have all of my Dan Browns like down here. But The Da Vinci Code, I always knew and loved the movie, so I never really wanted to bother with the book. But I kept getting recommended by people that love the book too. That it's worth it and I have to agree because it's not that it adds a lot I think the movie is actually pretty good in adapting it it's just you get a feel for Robert Langdon's thought process and his like perspective you could never get that in adaptations obviously but I think it was worth it and if you loved the movie or maybe you're potentially interested I think this is definitely gripping enough to keep you reading even though you know the plot i like devoured this pretty quickly then next is my own brown aja a book with a library setting or a story within a story i have neither which is kind of an embarrassment <laughs> but let me see i for this one i have to pick out a book that I do not even enjoy Strange the Dreamer because everything I enjoyed about this book was how lyrically she, des she describes the library setting and the beginning the entire chunk in the library is wonderful and that's what actually made me read the book <laughs> that's kind of what made me upset about it later 
but the library setting and just the lyrical writing and the descriptions and the prose is wonderful so I think I can count it for library story I didn't want to talk about it though because I hated it but I mean not this one the other one so I kind of hated the whole thing but yeah I had to kind of mention it I mean the library in this book is definitely a standout next up we have Yellow Aja a book that helped you get through a hard time or makes you feel happy this was a no-brainer I could have picked anyone any one of these books from the series but Anne, Anne of Green Gables or Anne of Avonlea or Anne of the Island, any of them. I read Anne of Avonlea, I think when I got on break, when I decided to switch majors or courses or however you say it in English. So there was like a period when I was not really sure what to do with myself and this really helped me because I just felt so wonderful and so into spring unlike usually <laughs> so this definitely helped me feel cozy and just comforted and very very happy and I have nothing else to say I even teared up which is not something you usually say for happy books but as we all know Ella Montgomery has an interesting mix of like heart heart-wrenching and also touching so any of the Anne books could count for this and then we have Blue Aja, a book with a good versus evil theme. Again, literally anything I read because I read fantasy, but I had to go with the classic, which is Lord of the Rings. I always hold up something different, so. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, classic good versus evil. It's like the original good versus evil, at least in fantasy. And for good reason, because it manages to capture a battle between good and evil without really delving into the evil side but you don't mind and that's what I love about it because I didn't expect it to be so centered on the good because obviously I'm familiar with the movies so the book really surprised me by not really focusing on anyone evil that much it's just following the good guys but it is still a battle good versus evil you can argue that it's not that developed but I think that wasn't the point like there wasn't no big bad it was just evil itself kind of like the wheel of time so I had to go with the classic two left and one of these is definitely a cop-out but I had nothing else White Aja, a nonfiction book that has taught you something new. I do not read nonfiction and I never will. So I went with something that definitely taught me something new, but it's not technically nonfiction, although it is, which is <laughs> The Art of Arietti. Like the, how do you even say that? Like this is, they describe how they animated stuff, how they drew stuff, that you have sketches in there and how the movie was made so technically it is a non-fiction and it did teach me something new it taught me how long it actually takes to make an animated movie like how many drafts it has to go through how many people have to sketch things out how many people are in charge of just one character so it definitely taught me something new and it is definitely non-fiction so I guess it kind of has to count <laughs> And the last one is Black Aja, a book or series you secretly love but don't want to admit. I don't really have anything for this because I'm not really scared of admitting anything, genuinely. I think that everything that I love and talk about, I love and talk about for a reason. I don't have like a secret pleasure. But I will pick this out because I feel like it's <laughs> just, just quickly, Shadow and Bone, just the Grisha trilogy. I think that's a guilty pleasure of mine because it's so, like now that I read it again, I realized how actually not developed it is until like book three, which I still haven't reread, but it's still very dear to me because of when I read it. And I think that for that really, really young adult fiction, this is really, really good. So I guess it would be a secret pleasure in the sense that again, it's kind of underrated to like this and not like Six of Crows. But again, it's not that secret because I did talk about Shadow and Bone a lot, especially in the beginning of Booktube. I would call it like now a secret pleasure because I don't talk about it that much anymore. I don't think it's the best thing ever written anymore because I'm a lot older now. But I still appreciate it for what it is and for the time that I read it in, it was phenomenal to me. And it got me out of my slump that Red Queen left me in, so... 
definitely Shadow and Bone, and I will still stand by that. Six of Crows was the better written book. This was the better crafted book, and I stand by that. Wraps up the video. It was a bit quick, and I'm sorry for that, but that's because this isn't really a recommendation video. This is just a prompted video. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you would pick out. I will leave Megan's video down below because she came up with it, obviously, and it's a very fun idea. I've always wanted to come up with a prompted video, but I just never really get the time to do it. So props to her because it was very fun. You can do it, obviously, if you'd like to. I never like tagging someone. Just do it if you want to do it. And I hope it was sort of entertaining some of the choices I was forced to make because I have nothing else to replace them. And I hope it kind of fit and still made sense. Anyway, brown brown representation. Let me know what Aja you are if you're also a brown. I see you and <laughs> thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.